With new AI tools and technology seemingly being added to Luminarnia every month, is it getting confusing to understand the difference between them and when to use each? The latest edition coming to your inbox on November 16th is called Gen Swa. It allows you to take elements from your image and turn them into something else, like this. Well, that may not be your cup of tea. It does a lot more subtle things as well. In this video overview, you'll see what it can do and how you can use it in your workflow. I'm Darlene with Digital Photo Mentor, and if you're ready to start using some artificial intelligence, let's take a look at GenSwap. Before we dive in and take a look at the tool itself, there's a few things that you need to be aware of. First of all, you do have to be connected to the internet to use this tool or any of the generative AI tools. When you add a prompt or make a request to erase or swap, you're sending that information to the cloud to get these new images to put into yours. So you do have to be connected. Second of all, I can already predict there's going to be questions about how it differs from Gen Erase. Gen Swap is designed to change or add something to your image whereas Gen Erase is designed to remove something or cover it up. Another big FAQ is who qualifies to get this tool and the other AI tools for free. If you have a current subscription, this is included with your monthly or annual fee. If you purchase a lifetime license to Luminar Neo quite a while ago, then you will need to have the Creative Journey Pass to access these tools. One thing to note is that the Creative Journey Pass is valid for one year. It's 2023 up to August 2024. What that means is any of the tools that get introduced during that period, you will have access to use inside Luminar Neo. It also means that if you don't renew your pass the following year, you'll lose access to the Skylum server meaning you won't have that cloud access to send the request to get a new image to swap out. Remember, you have to be connected to the internet. Well, the Skylum servers are on the other end of that request. And if you don't have a current Creative Pass or a current subscription, you won't be able to access that server and that information. And finally, if you're finding that this tool runs really slow, it has nothing to do with the speed of your computer or your processor or Luminar Neo itself. It's actually directly related to your internet speed. Also, how many other people are accessing the server at the same time? When Skylum released Gen Erase a while back, we actually crashed their servers because all of us were online trying the tool at the same time and the server couldn't handle the load. Now they're probably ready for us, but just be aware that if it is slow in returning results, it's the internet connection and the server that's slowing it down, not your computer or the software. All right, let's hop over to Luminar Neo and take a look at GenSwap. To start off, you need to know where to find the tool. When you're in the catalog module, it's over here on the right below Gen Erase. Remember, if you don't see them there, it could mean that your subscription or your plan doesn't qualify you to have it. So just check with your Skylum account and you may need to purchase an upgrade. If you need to do that, just remember to use the discount code DPM10 when you check out and you'll get 10% off your purchase. All right, let's start with something simple. So select an image. Then to activate GenSwap, you can either drag your image onto it or just click it like a button. I'll demonstrate both. Here's the drag method. You'll notice that it does take a moment to read the image. Again, it's looking for elements already in the photo. To get started, you just need to make sure you've got the select button activated. You can increase your brush size and then paint in where you would like to swap or add something. In this case, let's just see what happens if I select the entire hot air balloon. Now I've made a little mistake here on purpose and I've kind of got too close to the mountains. So I'm going to do deselect, get a smaller brush. The keyboard shortcuts do work for brush size and that's the square bracket keys. 
If you'd like a copy of the Luminar Neo Keyboard Shortcuts Cheat Sheet, I'll put a link for you in the description area below. So I'm going to make sure I've clicked Deselect, and I'm just going to get a little bit closer to the balloon so I have not so much sky selected. It's important to have an area around the object selected as well because it helps Luminar Neo analyze the image and make a better replacement. You can see I've also missed a spot in the middle, so I'm just going to switch back to select and make sure I have it all painted over. Now this is where Gen Swap differs from Gen Erase. With Gen Erase, you would just click the button and it would replace the selected object with something new, ideally covering it over, filling in the background. In Gen Swap though, there's a prompt area. So this is where you would type up to 256 words what you would like it to swap in for the area that you've selected. Let's try white and blue World War II style airplane. Then just click swap and you'll have to wait while it does the magic. Again, remember the time it takes to do this depends on the speed of your connection to the internet and how busy the Skylum server is. You'll notice that there are a few tips here that you can read through while you wait, including using nouns and adjectives, and avoid using verbs. You may get some odd results if you try using a verb. Okay, and now we've got our first result. Moving the mouse off the image, you could see that indeed it did replace the balloon with an airplane. That looks pretty good. If you're not happy with the result, you can either change your prompt and try it again, or just hit swap again and go through the process one more time. So let's do that. Continuing on with the tips here, you can read these on your own as you go through. Feel free to mask a slightly larger area than you need, as I mentioned. Use nouns and adjectives, not verbs. The more detail and the longer the prompt you write, the better result that you may get. Notice that I put colors and the style of plane that I wanted, not just airplane. Well, that one is a little bit weird. Let's zoom in a bit and have a look. Such is the nature of generative AI. You will probably get some weird results. I've had some very odd things appear, even with Gen Erase, as well as trying this tool out. I actually spent a number of hours experimenting with it just to try and get something that was usable. And I find that you do a lot of experimenting with different prompts, different selections, and so on. So there's a bit of a learning curve to it. I'm just going to undo one step because I think this plane was a little bit more realistic. So I like that plane. So now I'm going to reset the selection and let's try a new selection. And I'm just going to draw an area around here like this. And let's see if we can get some fluffy white clouds. Now, if I knew the kind of clouds that I wanted, I could type that in as well. So a little Google search and we can write in cumulus. Hit swap and let's see what happens. Notice tip number four recommends if you have an object with a shadow, make sure you select the shadow as well when you're doing the replacement. Hmm. I had this happen a few times. I had to do this over and over again because it would not put a cloud in the sky for me. So let's try a different approach. Let's see what happens if we color off the edge of the image. Maybe I can rearrange the wording. So it says fluffy white cumulus clouds in the sky. So let's try it one more time. Notice that the last tip that pops up tells you about if you get a warning message saying inappropriate content. It doesn't allow you to generate certain things. If you get that message, just click through to the terms and conditions of using the generative AI tools. I'll put a link to that page in the description area below so you can read it. Well, we got some clouds, but certainly not big fluffy ones. Let's try a new approach. One last time, I'm going to add the word big and I'm gonna change the order of words again. I'm going to say big, white, fluffy, cumulus clouds in the sky. One more go, fingers crossed. That's not bad. I'm going to run with this. Just like Gen Erase, 
When you click Save, it's going to make a new TIFF and save it in the same folder. So if we take a look, it's called Generative Creations. So Gen Erase and Gen Swap results go into the same folder. So let's take a look at the before and after. There's the original and there's the new creation. I'm not even going to get into the discussion around ethics on doing this kind of thing because there's much talk around, is it still photography? Is it your image anymore? And so on. That's a whole discussion for another day. Let me show you a few other examples of what I was able to do using GenSwap. This is a stock image that I downloaded of a coffee cup taken from overhead. I decided I wanted to try and add kind of a cappuccino foam look on top. So I used GenSwap, selected the inside coffee part, and that's what I was able to create. It's pretty good if you consider the fact that it's even got a shadow here going in the right direction. You see the shadow going on the left of the cup, meaning the light is coming from the right, so it's put the shadow of the cup onto the foam. I give that two thumbs up. On another stock image of a coffee cup, I seem to have a trend going here, I wanted to replace the mug with something a little more holiday oriented and see if I could get steam to rise from the mug. That's what I came up with. It's not perfect. There's some artifacts and things around the smoke here and this area around the handle, but look, it even added some little Christmassy or holiday kind of decorations and candies on the saucer and the table. So that's pretty cool as well. This one I wanna show you live. So this time I'm going to open GenSwap just by making sure the image is selected and clicking GenSwap over here on the right. This is another stock image, but it looks to me like the Tuscany area in Italy. So I thought, let's replace this house here with a castle. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. It always helps to come closer so you can see what it is exactly that you're selecting or masking. So I'm just going to select an area around like this. And it doesn't have to be perfect because the program's gonna fill it in, right? And now the prompt that I give it needs to be as specific as possible with a noun, some adjectives, and no verbs. I'm gonna start with Tuscan style villa. Let's see what happens. That's not bad. If you wanna see the before and after, just press the eyeball for a preview. You can see it even changed the hill back here a little bit. Let's try a different prompt. This time I entered Tuscan ancient castle with turret. And away we go. I had to adjust the prompt and run it a few more times to get something I was happy with. So keep that in mind. In my process of experimenting with this tool, I found that the biggest time consuming part was waiting for it to process and come up with a new variation and then enter new prompt and wait again. So don't expect it to be an instant fix or replacement of something in your image. It takes a little bit of work on your part, playing around with the prompts and the selection, as I mentioned. Another thing I had in mind for this image was I wanted to fill this whole field with a vineyard and grapevines. So I painted over the whole area like this. Let's just get a smaller brush and get in there. Get as close to these trees as I could. That looks good. I already tried this one yesterday and it took me quite a few prompts to get something. So I'm gonna go right to the one that I think is gonna give us a good result. I ended up with field full of ripe grapes on the vine. I tried just grape vines and I tried vineyard and it didn't give me any leaves. So I'm gonna try this one and see what I get. You see what I mean? It's a little underwhelming, right? And if we zoom in even more, I don't see any grapes, do you? I'm gonna try one more time. There's my new prompt. Let's give it a go. Fingers crossed one more time. While we're waiting for it to process, I'd really appreciate if you gave this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Okay, now we're getting closer. I found that I did this several times and I got a decent result. I'll show you the other one that I did yesterday 
but it still looks more like a painting than an actual photo. So I wasn't 100% thrilled with this result. This is the best result I got yesterday. And as you can see, it's still not all that great. It still looks a little bit drawn in as opposed to photographic. What it does take into account though is perspective as the vines got further and further away. And so that was kind of impressive, but it ends up just looking like stripes. The building I created yesterday, I think is better. And I used the word castle for that one, but the hot air balloon that I added, not so much, right? It's not even round. It looks like the basket's gonna fall off and it looks like a cartoon. I tried it a few times and got hit and miss results. So I feel like at this point, it does a better job on certain things than other things. Adding a person, I tried a few times, not good at all. I got some weird results like this swimmer in a pool that looks like a sea monster and also trying to add animals they weren't so great looking either. They certainly didn't look photorealistic. But I found that Photoshop's generative AI, which has been out a lot longer, doesn't do those items very well either. So I think it's a limitation of the generative AI technology. And as it moves forward, we're only going to see improvements. Let me show you one final example that took me over an hour and a half to do, but the end result is actually pretty impressive. This is a stock image that I downloaded. Pay particular attention to her hand, what she has on her head, and her jacket and what she is wearing. Here's the after image created with GenSwap. What do you think? So let me ask you this. Is this something that you're ever going to have a use for? In my workflow and my photography, I see limited applications for it. Adding the earring was a nice touch. Maybe the fingernail polish. If the model shows up and they say, oh, I didn't get to the nail salon, can you fix that? Well, yes, I can. But I don't know about replacing a hat with a different hairdo or replacing a jacket with a fur coat or changing their clothes. I tried changing the clothes on my sister-in-law and an image of her and her husband, and the results were less than stellar. It doesn't even look like her, and it certainly wasn't a black blouse or a black sweater, which is what I asked for in the prompt. So can it do impressive things? Yes. But it also begs the question, should you do those things? This is something that has come up quite a few times in Facebook groups, camera clubs, and other places where photographers get together. Should the use of generative AI tools like this be mentioned when you're sharing an image that has used that technology? What do you think? Is it fair game? Is it cheating? Should they at least tell us? I'll do another full discussion on this topic because I think it's a really interesting and important one. But for now, tell me your thoughts. Personally, I think it's a slippery slope and the technology kind of scares me. So where do we go from here? If you'd like to learn how to use all the regular tools, check out Luminar Neo, the complete course now. You get step-by-step -step instructions and my raw files to practice with. You can also watch another video here on YouTube. Just click one on the screen now. Until next time, take care and have fun playing with the AI technology.